Carbonara is the most famous Italian dish in the world. Today I'm gonna try six variations of it from all over the world to see if the original and strict one is actually the best one. I found the recipes online, of course. I've changed them sometimes just to fit my needs, my taste, or the availability of ingredients in Italy. But if you want to make the official ones, you can find them down below. As you may yet noticed, Italians are a little bit strict when it comes to Italian food. So, <laughs> if I don't say that the original one is the best and only one that deserves to be on Earth, I will probably lose my Italian citizenship and my family will sue me. But you know what? I refuse to chain myself to the rules of society. I will make this test and I will only speak the truth. Let's just get started. The first one, of course, will be Italian carbonara. No, 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 the carbonara. You may know or not know the ingredients of the Italian carbonara, but let's start with pasta. I believe that more than one kind of pasta is accepted, but spaghetti is the most common one, so we'll go with spaghetti. Then, of course, eggs, but only the yolks, not the whites. Then a very good pecorino, which is not the parmesan cheese, which is totally different because it's from sheep and not from cows finely grated and then maybe here i made a little mistake because you need the guanciale but i don't have a whole piece of guanciale that i've cut myself i bought this already cut in pieces guanciale which is not the best and maybe that's enough to make an italian angry hungry angry not hungry so that's it carbonara needs only four ingredients let's cook it Put the water on maximum heat as a start, then pour some oil, oh no, no, <laughs> no, oil is forbidden. Guanciale has enough fat itself, you won't need oil at all. You know, when you cook with guanciale, you will always feel it, it tastes and smells amazing. <laughs> During this emotional process, it's time to throw the pasta into the water, and Italian style is not to break it. Then take all the melted fat out of your guanciale and mix it with <laughs> the yolks. But actually it's kind of one yolk for each person. I tried to make one yolk and a half, okay? Then <laughs> whisk it very well and when you are done, mix it with pecorino in the same amount of pasta. So if you are making 100 grams of pasta, use 100 grams of pecorino. Dear God, I hope so. Then you are left with this gorgeous juicy cream. I forgot to set the timer, but for an Italian it's not a problem because you just taste it. Pasta was good, so you mix the guanciale with the pasta. And also if it's too dry, you mix it with pasta water in order to make the pasta very flavorful. After that, far from the heat, you mix it with the creamy sauce. And you are left with this amazing Italian pasta, 100% Italian. Also the pepper. Oh, I forgot to show the pepper as an ingredient at the beginning, so the ingredients were five and not four. Anyway, you need to use the pepper at the end of the process. A sparkle on the plate, also more than a sparkle if you want. So we need to talk about the original carbonara. It's creamy, yes. It's flavorful, yes. It's salty, yes. Is it my favorite dish in the world? No. You need to know what you are getting into, because guanciale is strong, pecorino is strong and also pepper is strong for me. It's not an everyday dish. I cannot see it as a comfort food. It's just really strong, okay? I will rate this 8 out of 10. Am I ready now? Now I'm rating 8 out of 10 eggs. Eggs will be the thing that I ate the most and also the rating scale. Dish number 2. How could I not mention the Gordon Ramsay's carbonara? We're making it, guys. He uses spaghetti again, so we'll go with spaghetti. Also, he uses yolks and not whites, which is good. Here I made a mistake, because I bought very thin pancetta. It's just not good for the plate and the way he cooks, I, it, it, it's not good. My bad. We go on with the ingredients, which are peas and mushrooms. After that, we bring heavy cream in the scene and parmesan cheese, which is allowed. Also, another two ingredients are very strange, because there is olive oil and chili flakes. Of course, any Italian here would say 
say is angry and also that it's not carbonara you can make pasta wherever you want but don't call it carbonara we are a little obsessed about this okay then you start to cut your <laughs> extremely thin pancetta and then separate it because it stacks together then the mushrooms very thin because i don't like them and then you prepare your amazing carbonara sauce but gordon makes something special which is mixing it with heavy cream and also of course heavy cream doesn't fit with this it separates so you cannot actually mix it then yeah the infamous olive oil and your pancetta he makes another strange thing which is seasoning the pancetta in the pan which is something that you don't do in the carbonara also adding the mushrooms then it's time to cook the pasta while everything is basically pan frying and then <laughs> he does this thing which is adding pasta water on the pan i mean a lot of it like he does it dozens of times when the pasta is cooked you put it in the pan keep adding pasta water like there is no tomorrow and also don't turn off the heat and then add this heavy cream egg yolk parmesan mixture and then start to stir it and then you are left with this <laughs> an italian would say dog food <laughs> I didn't have fresh parsley and I used a frozen one which is ugly to see but I guess gives the flavor and then it's time to taste it the smell cannot be that bad of course the flavor well it's pasta with cheese with pancetta with heavy cream what was totally off for me was the chili flakes because they gave this hot aftertaste that didn't fit at all also for some reason there was no carbonara vibes about this as Vinsanto would say, it tasted very old, like the pasta you ate in the 90s and in the 80s in Italy at the restaurant. All the way to cook pasta. It's time for the third dish and we fly off to Asia. I guess between China and Japan and we are cooking ramen. You may not believe me, but I never cooked ramen for myself at home in my entire life. So I opted for Eastern ramen. I hope it's fine. Also, I never even saw the miso paste what's wrong with me the ingredients are ramen furikake this magic miso paste which when i smelled it was like the flavor of miso itself and i had no idea it even existed parmesan cheese pepper bacon and we are done you start with two entire eggs, then two tablespoons of miso paste, a lot of parmesan cheese and the pepper, and then whisk all together. Whisk it a lot, guys, because the miso paste doesn't melt so easy. And then you'll have this creamy Asian carbonara sauce. Then fry your pancetta or bacon with no oil until it's brown, and then boil your ramen. When the ramen is soft enough, but not too much, maybe I overcooked it, mix it with bacon, which is actually pretty similar to to the Italian style. If they dry too much, keep in mind you can add the pasta water, then turn off the heat and add your carbonara sauce. You learn that when it's slightly heated, this kind of sauce will get really creamy. The result is so juicy and cheesy, you won't believe it. For the real Japanese vibes, I strongly suggest you to find furikake. It's taste time. I'm sorry, I cannot lie to you. I absolutely loved it. It was so juicy, so cheesy, it was so flavorful. The smell was so fishy because of the furikake. The way the bacon met the Japanese taste, bacon and fish well mixed together with the parmesan that was so salty. And also you could taste the egg because there were two whole eggs in it. This was way more comfort food than the Italian one. Even if I had three more dishes ahead, there was no way I could stop eating it. So I needed my boyfriend to keep it away from me. That was a good revelation. Oh, I forgot I had to rate also the Ramsey version. Okay, Gordon, your carbonara tastes old, so you got 5 out of 10. Instead, this Asian carbonara has a way higher ranking in comfort food rather than the Italian one. But can I rate it higher than the Italian one? And I will, because of the new of it. 8 and a half eggs out of 10 because it felt so special, so unusual. If it's late at night and I'm hungry and I have Italian carbonara and Asian carbonara in front of me, I will pick Asian carbonara. 
time for the fourth dish. This time we fly off to Korea. And there is another pasta that I never cooked myself. These Korean rice cakes. I am so new to them that I actually thought they were frozen, but they were not. They are also very heavy, so I had no idea how much should I cook. Then for the recipe we need an onion, garlic, bacon, milk and parmesan. Also we need grated mozzarella, but in Italy we don't have such a thing. So I found these little cheeses, which I think are very similar to the grated mozzarella you can find abroad. I've cut it in small pieces so it was comparable to grated mozzarella, then pepper, then my infamous <laughs> frozen parsley. Then you can start cutting everything. You cut the onion, you cut the garlic and you cut the bacon. Every time I cut the bacon slices all together, then I have to separate them all one by one. Put your bacon in a pan with no oil, then I believe I made a little mistake because I overcooked it before adding all the seasoning and the stuff, a mistake that I will make in the next recipe too. Then you add the onion and when you feel it's done like nice crispy brown and looking good, you add the rice cakes and the milk. I cannot not say that for an Italian, milk over a pan-fried bacon and onion is unacceptable. Then you go through a process of believing. You will have to believe that this will work. You will see it grow and make a lot of bubbles and change color. The time will go by and you will see the milk thickening and browning and until you are close to the final dish you will never tell if you are doing good or not. But you will, because at the end of this process you will find yourself in front of this unbelievable dish, which is bubbling in front of you and in which you will have to add the mozzarella also and you will suddenly forget that it was milk and that you had doubts along the way and for some reason you will totally get from the flavor that it wants to be Italian. But at the same time it will be so Korean, so cheesy and rich. I swear you will stand behind your choice, you will make it again and again and you will never regret it. There is an era before and after this dish. Please trust me when I say this is your next favorite dish. I'm ready to leave my Italian citizenship, I'm ready to leave my family, my home and my country and I want to go and live in Korea forever. Try to guess my vote. This is an absolute 10 out of 10. Okay, I tried to calm down for the next recipe. It's actually the next day because I was unable to eat more carbonara that day. It's time for the American one. We start with fettuccine. I used even a thicker one, which are pappardelle. They are basically fettuccine, just wider. Then there is a new ingredient in our journey around the world, which is butter. Everything else you already know, peas, garlic, heavy cream, everything is in there. You chop, 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 you break, break, break. This time as well, there is an entire egg instead of the yolks only. Also, as you may have noticed, there is a lot of garlic in these recipes. You just go ahead and pan fry your bacon or pancetta with the garlic. And when it's nice and crispy and brown, you just separate it from its own melted fat so it stays crispy. Then in a smaller pot, you melt your butter, then you add your heavy cream and somehow you cook it. I I don't know how to explain it but I'm not even sure right now if I've made it right but you just keep stirring it and cooking it until it changes maybe color and shape and you know I I just don't know, I don't know what I was doing, okay? When fettuccine or pappadelle are al dente, you bring back bacon and its fat and mix it all together in the pan with your previous fat, butter and heavy cream sauce. Everything becomes very fat and very creamy. And then you add your peas. I added my peas at the last moment because they were not frozen, so they just needed a quick jump on the pan. Then turn your heat completely off and add your carbonara sauce. Immediately you can recognize a sauce that has the whites in it because it becomes suddenly very creamy and white without being scrambled because the heat is off. And finally, the taste moment has come. What do you say? Did I like it? 
there were some mixed feeling in there. For some reason it tasted more garlicky than others. Also it tasted very fat and in some way again a little bit old. I believe that for Italians pasta with heavy cream is actually a flashback. It's like the way you ate pasta 20 or 30 years ago. Also because for some reason this fat keeps you away from the actual taste of stuff. It's like a layer that thickens your pasta and your sauce, but you actually don't taste fully all the other ingredients. That's the reason why this dish doesn't win over the Italian carbonara. This is only a 6. Barely a 6. It's a full 6. A fully 6x out of 10. I'm sorry Americans, you didn't get it through. Here we are at the last recipe. We'll go back where we were, in Great Britain. British carbonara is not Gordon Ramsay's carbonara. I'm sorry God. But not even this one is British carbonara, because I believe British carbonara has ham. I didn't even figure this out. Please help me. How is British carbonara made? I found this recipe, which is basically Italian carbonara with cheddar, I know very basic, but with a twist. Anyway, let's get into this. This time we are cooking penne. There is a special ingredient, which is rosemary. And there is no reason why rosemary should be here, but it is. Actually, this is a pretty simple recipe. Like, there are not so many ingredients, but cheddar is the leading character in this. I didn't have an old thick piece to grate, so I had to go <laughs> with this method, which is really questionable. But at the end, I was able to have this grated cheddar with slightly bigger pieces, I guess, which I had to whisk with one full egg. The result seemed a little bit off, so I'm not sure that the proportions were okay, but I went on with the garlic and the rosemary. Both needed to be cut in a really small pieces. The recipe said, with the bacon or pancetta, add olive oil if needed, and this pancetta was really low fat, so I decided to add olive oil this time. And also I made another mistake, because I didn't want to repeat previous mistakes, but this time I added the smaller ingredients way too early and then I ended up with the overcooked seasoning. I read in the recipe that the mixture of egg and cheddar needed some pasta water and that made it smoother. Then when the pasta is al dente you put it in the pan, you shake it and then you turn off the heat and pour your carbonara sauce. At the beginning your sauce will not look okay, but just give it time. It will transform into something. Thing. Amazing. When I tasted, it was the most tempting of the mold. The smell was really rich. The rosemary made its job, and the appearance was so cheesy and full. The taste was absolutely great. I had to figure it out because it was not so well balanced like not super salty or not super flavory, but the cheese suddenly kicked in and for some reason, may I say, it's the more American one. So kind of an enhanced <laughs> mac and cheese with bacon and seasoning, which is absolutely amazing. It was just really good. I'm gonna give seven and a half for the British one, absolutely recommended. Whoa, that was a trip. I've discovered new ingredients, new flavors. That was a long journey and was all around the world and I loved every minute of it. But this could be not over. I found a lot more recipes like the Indian carbonara, which is vegetarian and with curry, or maybe the ham British carbonara. Anyway, if you want me to know that I should go on, please hit like. And please also subscribe to my channel so you'll know when the next one will be. Today, I wanted to know which one is my favorite carbonara. And I believe that everybody got which one. This is Andrea and I want it all. See you soon! Oh!